Hello, another video from Anger Photographer. I'm going to show you a couple of video uh, series here, two videos, uh, one right after this one, on uh, some uh, neat pro tips using uh, Simplex household objects, which really uh, produce astounding results. You'd be surprised, and uh, by the way, if you think that uh, these are just cheapy techniques, that no pro uses, well you'd be wrong because there's more than a few of them that have actually used this with great success. Now the same thing that actually limits how you use a fisheye lens for example, I mean a fisheye lens used incorrectly can make the most beautiful woman in the world look just but ugly. Uh, the same is true of using a pantyhose a front filter like this that I actually have attached via velcro on the front of uh, my lens hood. Now what you want to do is actually get thin pant. don't ask where I got the pantyhose from. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, what you definitely want to do is you do want to stretch the pantyhose tight against the front so you do not just want to simply drape it over the lens hood. You want to stretch it out. It doesn't have to be the maximum but you can see I have quite a bit of tension here. And what I'm going to actually do is I have a SC29 flash cable attached to the top of my Nikon D750, hooked over to and coiled to an SB900. Now this is obviously a boring test subject, but what I'm going to be doing is showing you two things in one, how drastically changing the attack angle of your flash. This is why I've said many, many, seemingly countless times why having the SC29 flash cable is actually important. Now let me position this camera a little bit better so you can see what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the slide away but I'm going to take the actual test shots with this light off to get the maximum desired effect is I'm going to be trying various angles with uh, my S, uh, my SP910, uh, a speed light that's hooked via, it's basically a coil TTL cable to my Nikon, my Nikon D750. Um, changing the attack angles of, uh, of uh, flash interception to my main subject. Now one of the main things before I actually start doing that is that one of the best uses and the best um, places, and of course it depends on the desired effect that you want, the more light the better. In other words, the, uh, the less light you actually have cutting into the front element of uh, your lens with the pantyhose effect attached, uh, the more dramatic it is as so far as uh, uh, the uh, actual effect. The greater the light, the less it's actually visible. Now this is perfect for like uh, child portraitures. It's really effective uh, for strong uh, backlit subjects where you're using uh, flash illumination. It actually creates really beautiful shots if you're using like an 85 millimeter at a shallow depth of field. It just creates stunning effects Something that will actually take you quite a long time to do in Photoshop, even if you are trained on Photoshop. You know, just attach for, you know, 10 or 20 shots in the pantyhose filter. Get a nice strong backlit or even a frontlit subject. Um, you know, narrow down your depth of field and uh, as the more light, the less dramatic the effect is visible from the pantyhose uh, filter. Um, but you'll actually get some uh, stunning results. And I'm going to see the pictures below attached. So I'm going to be doing two things at once uh, with uh, this pantyhose filter. So I'm going to be showing you flash shots from various attack angles. And this is why I've said so many times that actually having this SC29 for a TTL flash control for getting off camera um, speed light uh, illumination your subject is so important. I mean, when you're a photographer, every photographer knows that uh, the premium time for taking good lighting is very early morning and very late evening. And time is a premium. And basically once the sun's, you know, cracked daybreak, I mean, you, you've got like a 20 minute window. So, I mean, you've got to be really fast and pre-plan out everything. And uh, since you can't get that most of the time, or if you're too lazy to stay up, <laughs> stay up late or get up too early, then you're going to have to create the light yourself. And of course, especially in a studio, it doesn't matter. So you have to create that effect when you're doing a product illumination. Now, this isn't necessarily a product, but it is there to prove a point. So what I'm going to be doing is like this. Here we go. Test the shot. Exactly what I wanted. Now what I'm going to do is taking the be like up above and behind the shot and I'll show you these pictures for download below dramatically changes the effect and this is so important not you know just in portraiture but products and just 
There's countless, countless applications. I'm going to get back and behind. Okay. I have my exposure compensation set three quarters of a stop over where I want it on this because I'm only spot meeting for the highlights and uh, my flash photography here. And that's exactly what I wanted. And uh, you'll see the pictures below as examples of what you get. And you'll notice that the more light, the more, uh, the less dramatic uh, the effect is of the pantyhose filter. So um, this is a very useful and uh, completely free tip. You know, if you got your wife's uh, panty, <laughs> your wife's pantyhose laying around, uh, just use those. Um, also, different color pantyhose would give different effect. Um, uh, I actually prefer to use, <laughs> it sounds so weird, I actually prefer to use the white pantyhose for the effect that I get instead of the typical, what do they call them, nude or taupe pantyhose. Um, I've been using this trick for quite a long time. Let me turn the light around so you can see how taut and how I have it attached. There you go. And that's it. Right there. And I just have a simple ring of Velcro, so I'm actually able to cinch with tension the pantyhose. Like I said, you just don't want to place it over the front. But you don't want any seams in the front as your image is passing through. You want a nice even tension of the light that's actually entering the front element of your lens there. Now, I normally be using a macro, but I can prove my point easily enough with this 24-85 to VRG zoom. Uh, but try this. Uh, try it with a backlit, um, like a child. I mean, there's just, there's countless, I, I wouldn't recommend it for macro photography, but it actually has a really neat effect, like if someone's photographing roses. Um, I've uh, made a nice, a beautiful shot using uh, translucent illumination from underneath the roses and using a pantyhose filter. It just creates a really... You know, let your mind run wild. Just experiment with it. And the same thing, like I said, with a fisheye. You're going to have to experiment around with it for 20 or 30 minutes out in the yard is good enough. And it doesn't have to be flash photography. It could just be natural sunlight. And you can see, you will immediately see what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, this would make a beautiful uh, ethereal portrait uh, shot. Or, uh, you know, I'm, I was thinking about this sort of, you know, ethereal misty shot to give an X uh, situation. It's all about your mind and, uh, you know, stuff like this is completely free. You know, you don't bebop down to your camera shop and buy it. I mean, it's just simplex stuff that took me, you know, 30 seconds to attach, but it gives a really nice effects. Anyway, check the pictures down below and uh, you'll see the effects, but I'll be not only showing you the effects of the pantyhose filtration, but also the effects of how important and what I've been talking about for so long when it comes to use of uh, this SC29 a TTL. Now this is autofocus assist module up here that's connected to my hot shoe, my D750, coiled and attached to my uh, Nikon SB910 flashlight, SB800, SB700, SB900, whatever. But a very, very, very useful tool. Um, one of the most egregious things is doing a flash photography uh, with your speed light attached on the top of your camera. As I've said before many times, also everybody sees that on paparazzi photography, but that is simplistic journalistic photography. It is not about the art per se. It is about you know capturing somebody doing something weird or whatever, traveling from here or there. But that's not the sort of photography that you're... You may be interested in that, but that's not the sort of photography so far as getting the best effects. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So doing flash photography with your uh, speed light attached to the top of your camera, you know, 99% of the situations is not a good idea for obvious and logical reasons. It's the same reason why noonday light makes gorgeous women look like dogs and it makes pictures look boring and dead. So anyway, I've flat my lips enough and check out the test shots below, okay?